Welcome to Microsoft Windows Beginner Level 1, Lesson 2, brought to you by WindowsLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In this lesson, we're going to learn all about what's new in Windows 11 and what features are now gone. May they rest in peace. Let's talk about what's new in Windows 11. We'll start off by talking about the redesigned user interface. They really gave Windows a little bit of a facelift here. You'll see that the windows have the new rounded edges. Ooh, ah, that's pretty cool, huh? The taskbar has the buttons centered now, and the start button itself will open up the start menu centered in the middle of the screen, as opposed to over here on the left. Yes, you can change that back if you're stubborn and want it on the left. I'll show you how to do that when we get to the taskbar settings. I kind of fought it myself at first, but I kind of like it in the middle now once I got used to it because I got a big monitor and I'd rather have the start menu in the center of it than all the way over in the left corner where I can barely see it. You'll also notice that the icons are smaller and more streamlined. You can now also switch between virtual desktops, have easier access to recent files, and the ability to snap windows side by side. And we'll talk about all this stuff in future lessons. There's a new feature called Snap Layouts that makes it easier for you to snap a window into a particular spot on your screen. You'll see this when you hover over the Maximize button, you get a little layout window appears. If you want this window to appear, let's say in the upper right corner of the screen, just click on that and it snaps over there. Or you can click on it again and say, I want it over there and it jumps over there. That's pretty cool, huh? I actually use a feature called Fancy Zones as part of the Power Toys utility set. And I'm gonna teach you about that a little bit later on too. The File Explorer has gotten a revision. You'll notice it's been streamlined and stripped down a little bit. The icons and the menus have changed a little bit. You got new icons to learn again. There's cut, copy, paste, and so on. Deletes up here. One thing I'm not particularly fond of is you got to right click to get the right click menu. You got the icons across the top here. And then to get the classic options that you had before, you got to click show more options. So it's just another step. I don't know. It's going to take some getting used to. I fought the new ribbon in Office 2007 when it first came out. Now I love it. So I'm sure I'll get used to this eventually. I'm starting to turn into a grumpy old man where I don't like change. But <laughs> sometimes change is better. Sometimes it's not. Remember, Windows Vista and me and okay. <laughs> we'll talk a lot more about the File Explorer coming up. Remember when you got used to the control panel that Windows used to have and you knew where everything was? Well, they changed it again. <laughs> they got a new settings app and it's completely revised. The good thing is, is that you can search for pretty much any setting using the search bar and it's easy to find. So you want to add or remove programs, that's easy to find, that kind of stuff. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this in depth. The Microsoft Store has gotten a complete overhaul. It now has support for both the modern apps and traditional desktop applications. Remember, apps were specifically designed for Windows and you could only get them from the App Store. That way Microsoft could make sure they were safe and virus free, as opposed to traditional desktop applications that pretty much anyone could write and you could download them and install them as you've been for decades. One of the nice features now is if you open up an app, like Prime Video here, for example, it will run in a window. If you remember some of the older versions of Windows, all of these apps would open up full screen. You couldn't very easily switch between them. So that's nice now. Windows 11 has a new widgets feature. Yeah, I know Windows had widgets back in like Windows 8, but they redid them again. Here you go, click on it, boom, widgets. And these can be customized. And we'll talk about these later. Microsoft Teams is now included with Windows 11, and that's Microsoft's answer to Zoom. During the pandemic, everyone was video conferencing, and so Microsoft decided to include Teams with the newest version of Windows. Teams is going to get its own separate lesson or three, so stay tuned for that. Now, of course, they say this with every new Windows version, but Windows 11 is designed to be more efficient and secure than Windows 10. It uses less memory and CPU power, and it's got a number of new security features, of course. Windows 11 is supposed to start up faster and give you better battery life for your laptop. I have not tested these myself, but that's what several articles that I've read have said. The downside, of course, if you've got an older PC, 
you may not be able to upgrade. In fact, if your PC is more than three or four years old, I wouldn't even bother upgrading to Windows 11. But like I said in the last lesson, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Unless there's something really that you need bad in Windows 11, just stay with Windows 10 or whatever you've currently got. And of course, as far as improved performance goes, Windows 11 is supposed to be much better for gaming. I'm not a gamer myself. I haven't been for years, but it supposedly has uh, DirectX 12 Ultimate support, Auto HDR, and a bunch of other cool gaming features. Windows 11 is supposed to have improved support for touch devices, including larger touch targets and new touch gestures. We'll talk about these in a future lesson. Windows 11 seems to be pretty much the same operating system whether you're using a PC or a tablet, whereas older versions, you know, they acted and felt much differently depending on what kind of device you're on. Windows 11 is a whole lot better at that. As with every new version of Windows, they've improved the accessibility features, improved screen reader support, new keyboard shortcuts, and a new on-screen keyboard. And finally, one of my new favorite features is something called the phone link. It allows you to seamlessly connect to your cell phone. I use it all the time for sending and receiving messages. You can actually open up a window that's got your screen as it appears on your phone. It's really cool. The first couple of versions had some bugs in it, but they've worked out the kinks and now it's working pretty awesome. I used to have to use something else like Facebook Messenger because I like to type messages when I'm at my desk. I want to type on my keyboard. And this app now allows you to send and receive text messages through your phone using the phone link. So that's pretty cool. Got a lesson on this coming up too. And again, a lot of these things used to be third-party apps. You could, you could get apps to do a lot of this stuff before, but now it's all baked into Windows, so it's a nice, seamless user experience. But I mean, if you go back far enough, remember the, the web browser didn't used to be part of Windows too. And so they just over time, they just keep adding stuff. All right, let's talk about some of the features that are gone from Windows 11. First off, Internet Explorer, rest in peace. Uh, we barely knew ye. Now, Internet Explorer has been around forever. It's been replaced by the new Edge browser. The Cortana personal assistant, it's still there. And if you say her name, she might appear. Um, kind of like Alexa and all those. But uh, they've kind of put it in the background. It's not up in your face anymore. Paint 3D is gone. And if you don't know what Paint 3D is, you're not alone. Almost no one used it, which is why they removed it. Skype is now gone, replaced with Teams. Microsoft spent a lot of money to buy Skype, and then they were like, meh, see ya. <laughs> the movable taskbar, I don't really know anyone that liked to move the taskbar. Usually it's just on the bottom of the screen, but in older versions, you can move it up and left and right and all over the place, and now you can't. So uh, from what I've seen, a lot of people are screaming online they want to be able to move it. Why? I don't, I don't know why. I, I've never moved mine. But uh, yeah, it might be coming back. The, uh, the timeline feature or Windows used to keep track of everything you worked on for like the past 30 days. I never personally used this feature, but I know a lot of people did. Synced wallpaper where you could like see the same wallpaper on multiple machines when you logged on with your account. I don't know why they got rid of that, but okay. Tablet mode is now gone, but like I mentioned, Windows 11 does a much better job of recognizing when you're working on a tablet and spacing things out for you. Live tiles are gone. Those things were annoying. Um, they were on the start menu and stuff and just were just weird. And OneNote is now gone from Windows, but you can download it for free from the Microsoft Store. So it's still available. And I think it comes with Office too. So that's just some of the stuff that's no longer available in Windows. But yeah. Okay. Thanks for watching. If you want me to post more videos about Microsoft Windows, then be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and post a comment down below. Let me know that you want more Windows videos. About 90% of what I teach is Microsoft Access database design, but I love teaching Windows, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and all those other topics too. But of course, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So if you want more Windows training, make some noise. You can watch my entire Microsoft Windows beginner level one course absolutely free on my website and on my YouTube channel. It's over an hour long and covers all the basics. If you like level one and want to learn more about Windows, visit my website at the link shown and you can get level two, which is another complete hour long course for just $1. Level two goes into a lot more depth and teaches you how to get the most out of Windows. Visit my website today for more information. Thanks for watching.
To learn more about Windows or any of the other topics I teach like Microsoft Access, Word, Excel, and more, visit my website at windowslearningzone.com.